Hi everyone, this is Khaled from Gen3 Talk and in this video we'll be looking at the 10th uh, ticket of the CCMP 2 shoot uh, track exam uh, questions. Uh, these tickets are very close into what sort of uh, questions that you will be getting into the exam and I highly recommend that you actually um, uh, follow this thoroughly and um, you, you'd rather build your own topology as well. I mean this will give you a good chance of understanding how the topology is working and how, how things are connected together. Um, Again, this is a topology. I tried to squeeze it as much as I could. Um, I'm going to start the topology. There's not much information uh, displayed on the on the, this topology, so we're going to assume that actually client one is having a problem connecting to the web server. Please read the each ticket as you go through them in the exam. Tickets may have different description, so doesn't uh, not all the ticket. Uh, have that client one is experiencing reachability problem with client two. Uh, most of them are, however, some of them they have an IPv version six or a uh, or an HSRP uh, topology problem. So I'm going to jump into the client one. This is the common practice is really to go into the client and check out the IP configuration first before you. Uh, start troubleshooting. Uh, you will be provided with a Windows machine in the exam, and so please don't uh, so use the IP config instead of uh, show IP interface brief. Uh, there are only two commands allowed on the client port in the exam: is ping and IP config. Other than that, even trace route is not really allowed. So rely entirely. You need to rely entirely on the um, routers for the trace route. So I'm going to show IP interface brief. There's a problem with the IP address itself and I'm not really receiving any IP address. Uh, as stated in my uh, previous ticket that if there is an IP address problem of client one then they, we have to start checking from the access switch all the way into the DHCP server. Why are we going to the DHCP server? Well because the DHCP server is uh, what assigns the IP address in the client. So there is a problem between this link ASW1, DSW1 and Router4. So yep, it has been a while. We haven't as we haven't been assigned an IP address. We need to check out that the VLAN 10 is is configured properly. Uh, so this particular port, which is FAT Ethernet 1.0, is configured properly uh, with VLAN to be a part of VLAN 10. We need to make sure that the trunk on the ASW1 is allowing VLAN 10. Remember, client one is part of VLAN 10, and the trunk has to allow VLAN 10 as well. So the, the DHCP discovery uh, packet, which is sent from the client when it's actually requesting an IP address should be able to pass all the way from ASW1 to DSW1 to DHCP server. So yep, we need to make sure that the trunk is actually a long VLAN 10. We also need to make sure that the connectivity or reachability between DSW1 and Router 4. So I'm going to go client. Yep, there's nothing here. So that's 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 the best we think uh, we, we can do anyway here. I'm going to go to ASW1 and enable and show VLAN. This is what you need to sh uh, do in the exam and actually show VLAN whereas here in this uh, topology I'm going to go show VLAN switch. The reason is this is a 16 um, a 16 port switch module which is plugged into 3660 and doesn't really it's not really a real switch so uh, we've, we've done our best to uh, integrate uh, this module into the 3660 uh, to make it as close as possible to the real switch. So the show VLAN switch shows us that actually there is a VLAN 10 which exists uh, fast Ethernet 1.0 which is this is um, what's connected to the switch it seems to be up now we need to check out the trunk so uh, access port seems to be fine uh, there is no uh, port in shutdown status so if I go show IP interface brief you won't have any port fast Ethernet 1.0 is up up look it's a good practice to check the physical connectivity obviously but there is now no physical connectivity issues in the topology provided in the exam now I need to check out the trunk so show interfaces trunk alright so we could see that allowed VLANs is 1 all the way to 1005 so, 1000, so VLAN 10 is allowed on the trunk on both uh, ether channels uh, VLANs allowed on active in the active management domain so yep 1, 10, and 20. So these are the three active VLANs which are allowed. So ASW1 seems to be fine. I'm going to jump to DSW1 and see what's going on. Uh, so DSW1 is here. Enable. Show uh, IP. So I'm going to go show VLAN switch. 
as I said before, you only need to do a show, v show VLAN in the exam. Okay, so VLAN 10 is not really assigned to any uh, access port, which is fa fine. This is a distribution switch, which means it doesn't really have any access port. It has routed ports and it has trunk ports. There's no client connected to it. Yes, you can. You can have a client, but there's none. So we don't really accept VLAN 10 to be assigned to any um, um, to any port. The good thing is VLAN 10 is active, so everything seems to be working fine. So ASW1 is working. It's, uh, sorry, uh, the configuration ASW1 is are fine. D uh, configuration on DSW1 are fine. We need to check the reachability between DSW1 and Router 4. So I'm going to go uh, ping it first. Ping 10.1.4.5. It's pingable. Um, as I said before, and in, uh, in the first or second ticket, I usually not ping it just right from the directly connected because, well, there's no nothing fancy about it. I'm going to ping it from the uh, IP address which is located on this side of the switch. So I'm going to go ping 10.1.4.5 and I'm specify a source in this case, which is here. 10.2.1.0/24. This is the actual subnet which sits in here, and DSW1 has the virtual interface uh, of .1. Uh, How do I know that? You need to remember this topology by heart. Here you go. VLAN 10 for DSW1, which is SVI, has got a 10.2.1.1. Okay, so 10.2.1.1. Packet sent with a source IP address of 10.2.1.1 and you could see it's timing out. What does that tell us? It tells us that uh, Router 4 does not know about this subnet which sits between DSW1. So it, there is a routing problem. Okay, so how do I know that again? We could verify this by going to Router 4 itself. And where is Router 4? There you go. The password is Cisco. Now, we know that the connection between Router 4 and DSW1 and DSW2 is really EIGRP. To verify, I'll show it to you here. This is IP version 4 layer topology, and you can see it's actually EIGRP 10. And it has to be, so really, Router 4 needs to learn about 10.2.1.0 slash 24. Uh, through EIGRP. So when I go to router 4 now and go show IP route and I'm going to specify which IP route that I want to know. I want to know the IP routes which are being received on EIGRP. There's nothing. Hmm. Why am I not receiving any EIGRP route on the uh, uh, on the routing table? Well is there even an EIGRP adjacency? Show IP EIGRP neighbor. Okay, so there's an EIGRP process, one, and there's no adjacency. Nothing really, it doesn't have any adjacency with router DSW1 nor DSW2. Let me go to the DSW1 and see whether DSW1 has an adjacency at least with DSW2. Show IP EIGRP neighbor. Okay, so the DSW1 got on process 10. So it's got a, a 10.2.2.1. Okay, so this is an SVI adjacency. Okay, and 10.2.1.2 on VLAN 10. So it's got an adjacency um, for VLAN 10 and 20, which is okay. It also has an adjacency with fast ethernet 13 which is this fast ethernet connected to DSW2. So there is an adjacency between these two but there is no adjacency between DSW1 with the router 4 and no adjacency between DSW2 with router 4. I noticed something. When I go show IP EIGRP neighbors on the DSW1 it says IP EIGRP neighbors for process 10 whereas in router 4 it says e no EIGRP neighbors for process 1. Process 1 in EIGRP indicates an autonomous system 1. Looking at this topology, it's actually 
supposed to be autonomous system 10 not 1 so I'm going to go show run and see what sort of configuration was done into the ERGRP okay you know what uh, the proper way of doing it is really show running configuration section ERGRP I don't know if this you can do this in the exam but look yeah it's a good thing to learn all right so it says router ERGRP 1 so doesn't doesn't look right now just to verify I'm going to go to the DSW one and see what sort of configuration it has show run section EIGRP okay so yep it looks like router EIGRP 10 so yep you could see there is an EIGRP um, mi misconfiguration on router 4 and instead of using 10 we're actually using 1 so we found out what the problem is the problem is actually at router 4 at router 4 what is the problem is a routing uh, protocol configuration issue what is the problem is uh, the ERGRP adjacent ERGRP autonomous system has been misconfigured on router 4 how do we fix it well really you just need to go route ERGRP 10 and put whatever uh, sub command that needs to be listed under it which are these ones so I'm going to uh, really just copy And gonna go config T. You need to really disable the uh, the no router EIGRP one. And you go router EIGRP ten. And I'm gonna paste all of my configurations. And here you go. The adjacency has come up straight away. The reason that uh, JCC has dropped is because I've configured the no auto summary afterward. So it actually summarizes everything and yeah, just quickly um, uh, unsummarize it again. So yep, there's a new JCC which has just been formed. What I'm going to do now is just jump to the router for again, show IP route and use EIGRP again. And here you go, you could see that 10.2.4, 10.2.1, 10.2.2 been learnt from uh, the from the from these switches. I'm not gonna look into which switch is which, but yeah. So this uh, 10.2.1 is really the uh, VLAN 10 one. I think 10.2.2 is really VLAN 20, and 10.2.4 is mm, I'm not too sure. Oh, actually, I think that's a VLAN 200 that we uh, looked into before. Um, to verify, is 10.2.1 is VLAN 10. Uh, 10.2.2 is VLAN 20 and for some reason yes yeah, VLAN 200 has been configured with some other values uh, which is a bit different anyway so it looks it's not really a big deal so alright so I'm gonna go to client one and see whether it has received an IP address ah. alright show IP interface brief it's received an IP address I'm gonna go 10 I'm gonna ping the Web server 209.65.200.241 If nothing, if everything is is working fine, we should get a reply at least. But it doesn't look like there is a reply. Hmm. Well, it looks like there is a bug in this bit ticket, in this ticket. So why don't we just go and troubleshoot it and see what's going on? Sounds really good. So router four, I'm gonna go ping. 209-65-200-241 okay router 4 seems to be working fine and I'm gonna go to the DSW one ping 209-65-200-241 okay so router 4 seems seems to be able to reach the network but anything beyond this is not really working so I'm gonna go to router four and see whether any distribution is being uh, has been done. Actually, I'm gonna go to router three and see if there's any uh, any of these subnets are, are being learned. So router three, show IP route OSPF. Okay, so I'm not really receiving any of the ten network for some reason. Here we go, ten dot one dot one zero zero, which is an OSPF intra um, intra area ten dot one dot one and via 10.1.15 okay so it's not really being learned from this one either show IP or SPF neighbors 
All right, so the adjacency is formed with router 4. So router 4 is not really doing something, it's not doing the right thing of distributing. Um, show IP, actually show run. I'm going to see if actually OSP, uh, the ERGRP learned route is are being distributed into OSPF. That could be the reason that this is really happening. This is not supposed to be part of the exam. This could be just a bug in that particular system. People really tend to, you know, to just do that IP assignment thing and just move on. Actually, I need to fix this and see whether what the problem is. I mean, this is part of our um, this part of our um, our life as engineers. All right. So uh, router ERGRP. Actually, we need to go router OSPF. Ah, here we go. There's no redistribution. There's no redistribution. So really, the ERGRP learned pa uh, uh, routes are not really being redistributed into OSPF. So config to router OSPF one redistribute ERGRP uh, what autonomous system is actually autonomous system 10 and you need to include subnets so it actually includes all the um, uh, all the subnets which are being learned and it's not instead of summarizing them, summarizing them and I'm gonna leave the values as they are because it's alright it's OSPF going to ERGRP ERGRP going to OSPF and uh, you know what I'm probably gonna go metric uh, metric value of I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it a metric value of 100, 100 just for it to be on the safe side. All right, let's go back to router three. Let's see what's going on. Are we learning? Uh, have we learned the 10.1 uh, and 10.2 networks? Yes, looks like we have. There you go. These are all a le or a uh, routes which are learned. So basically, this is a not so stubby area, not so stubby area between router three and router four, and ra the routes are being learned uh, uh, from uh, from the other router within the same area. So to verify what N two stands for, okay, N two here we go. So it's OSPF not so stubby external type two LSA, uh, type two uh, type two route, not type two LSA. All right, so I'm going to go back to client one and see whether I could ping it now. There you go. Yep. So we fixed two problems really now. First problem was the uh, ERGAP adjacency between the router four and the DSW one and DSW two was 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 down because the router four was configured with the wrong autonomous system number. The other issue was really router four not distributing or not redistributing all the ERGAP routes all into OSPF. Well, I hope this video has been informative and I would like to th I would like to thank you for watching.